Honey, what are you doing? Well, I'm pulling out some assets and vases that I have here in the kitchen. So, uh, so I can show everybody what these are. So on this side, I have Sprite. I have vinegar. I have a lemon. And I have some sour cream. And all of these contain acids or are acids. That's in the case of vinegar. It's the same as uh, acetic acid, but it's diluted. So over here, I have some bases. And notice that bases are also called alkalis. To avoid the confusion of bases being fundamental, you know, that kind of confusion. So we call them alkalis, and uh, it's actually an Arabic word. And I have some ammonia here, and I have some Drano, very, very strong base. And I have a very weak base, baking soda. So I'm going to carry out a little reaction here for you. And uh, I'm just going to put some baking soda on this plate. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my vinegar. And there you go. we got a nice reaction going there. All right. So we have an acid and a base reacting. And sometimes there are reactions where they... There's gas produced in bubbles. Sometimes these reactions, you can't see anything. For example, if I were to add vinegar to ammonia, you would see nothing, but yet there's a reaction going on. It's called a neutralization reaction. So yeah, acid and bases. And here I have some generic Alka-Seltzer, which is interesting because I was reading the ingredients, and it actually contains citric acid, aspirin, and sodium bicarbonate. So we've got citric acid, which is what's found in here, and uh, baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. Very bitter tasting. This stuff over here, kind of sour. Everything has a little tangy taste. A uh, little Sprite here. Yeah, it's got this... Mm. 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 Pretty good. All right. See you later. Well, so besides the acids and bases that I showed you in my kitchen, I, do, I want to show you some of the commercial acids that are here, right here in our stock room. We keep them in here for safety, and we have many different types of acids. We have hydrochloric acid, we have acetic acid, we have, actually we have sulfuric acid in here, nitric acid as well. And nitric acid we keep in here for safekeeping because we don't want it reacting with any of the other acids that are in here like acetic acid and form bad fumes that you don't want to smell. The bases are kept in other places and basically, basically the bases are harmless in terms of we don't have any fumes to worry about. So yeah, that's it. Today we're going to learn about acids and bases, but a little deeper than that we're going to compare them. So you've already seen that acids and bases are pretty much everywhere. There's no getting away from them. They're in your kitchen, they're in my cabinet in the back, they are in nature, they're everywhere. So keep that in mind. The next time that you're eating your salad or doing a lab in the classroom. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about the properties of acids. Acids react with most metals and they bubble and they form oxygen. So we're going to be able to see a little demonstration of that in class. They taste sour like lemons, mm, that sour taste. There's uh, sour gummies, you know those uh, uh, gummy worms or sweet, and sweet worms, I don't know what they're called, but anyway, that, they're my favorite. They're really tangy. Yes, they right? Yeah. All right, uh, frequently they feel kind of sticky, but not necessarily, not always. If usually they're gases or liquids, very seldom do we find them in the solid state. 
they are corrosive and they react with metals. When you put them on your hand, if they happen to, uh, happen to spill some acid on your hand, yeah, it's going to, you're going to feel it. You're going to know it. It's like if you have a little cut and you get some lemon juice in the cut, it stinks. Well, acids, very strong acids, and very concentrated acids as well, they can really hurt you. So we have to be very cautious in the lab. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about one of the most important things that you must remember is that acids produce hydrogen ions. A hydrogen ion simply is an ion, is an, a picture an atom that has lost its electron. So an atom that has lost the one electron, because hydrogen only has one electron. So let's, uh, let's think about this for a minute. So let's do the Bohr model. Hydrogen, this is hydrogen, and it has one electron. And this model, of course, we know that the model doesn't hold true today with the possibilities that we have to actually see atoms, but it has serves a good purpose for a, a model that helps us to understand. So this is the hydrogen atom. So the, the, here's the hydrogen atom, and if that electron is lost, now the only thing that's left is the proton in the center of the atom, in the nucleus. So at this point, then hydrogen becomes an ion, positively charged, because it lost one electron. So if it has one proton, one electron here, it's neutral, but it, when, when it loses that one electron, it becomes hydrogen ion. So acids have uh, the property, one of the properties that they have are characteristics is that they produce hydrogen ions. All right, now let's talk about bases. Bases feel kind of slippery to the touch. They taste bitter, very bitter. Uh, if you want to taste uh, a base, take some baking soda and put it in your mouth and see what it tastes like. That's what bases taste like. React with oils and grease. So that's why basic um, react with oils and grease, and that's uh, a good thing because Drano is a base, very strong base, and uh, it acts very well on the grease and the oils that end up in your drain. So you can unclog your drain that way. And frequently, bases are solids. Not always. Here's an example of a gas, this is gas, uh, this is ammonia. This is one of those compounds that we has a specific name and we don't use in the stock system necessarily to name it. The last and most important is that bases produce hydroxide ions. And you're going to learn a little bit more about that. All right, so back to acids for a moment. They make hydrogen ions. And here I showed the hydrogen that I was talking about before. Here's the proton, here's the electron. It's a neutral atom. Uh, but here, when that electron is lost, if that electron goes somewhere else, here it, it ends up being over here. And we move to the side. And the, what remains is the proton. All right, so here's a map of your tongue. And uh, just so you know, sweet, you will detect right in here. Salty on the side to tongue. Uh, sour on the side. And bitter right up here. Usually, what is detected by the sour taste receptors is the hydrogen ion. So if it contains hydrogen ion, your tongue detects it and detects that sour taste. Bitter would be a base detected here. And it is also a very good thing because most poisons are bases. So therefore, this area right here acts as a gatekeeper. And you're like, no, I don't want to eat any more of that. Or I don't want to drink any more of that because that's bitter, that's basic, it can hurt me. So it blocks it. But it really, it's, I believe that it, what it detects is the nitrogen ions that are 
uh, present in, um, or, or nitrogen uh, present in many bases, in the ions present in the bases. It doesn't detect, I don't believe it detects necessarily the hydroxide ion. All right? All right, so here's the representation of what we have been discussing and talking about. Acids have hydronium ions, and here's HCl gas, and here's HCl AQ, meaning that this is hydrogen chloride. That's what we call it as a gas, hydrogen chloride. However, when we place it in water, it becomes hydrochloric acid. And once it is placed in water, inside, of course, in the water, I didn't want to put it too low, there's dissociation, and this is surrounded by water, as is the, these ions, and they're kept away from each other. This is what gives the acid the characteristics. So if you stick your hand in there, it's going to have those characteristics that we spoke about, but the hydrogen ion is going to be present in that substance. All right, so that tells you a little bit about the characteristics of acids, and I'll see you in class.